Hi, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. In this video, you will learn how to type on screen during PowerPoint slideshow. Now you might wonder what possibly could be the use of such a technique. Let me show you three practical applications of this simple technique that will blow your mind, especially if you are a teacher, trainer, professor, or any other kind of educator. Let me show you the first application. Let us say you are a geography teacher. You just completed your lesson teaching seven continents of the world. Now, would that be useful if you can revise the names of these continents with your students by having a slide like this, where you can type the names of the continents. For example, I can ask one of the students to tell me the name of this continent. I can then confirm the answer by typing as South America. I then invite another student to tell me the name of this continent, and then I confirm it by writing the name like so. Since there is an active involvement of the students, the names will be remembered much longer. Now, let us say you are a physics teacher and you want your students to remember the definition of joule. And the definition goes like this. It says a joule is a unit of work or energy equal to the work done by a force of one newton acting through a distance of one meter. Once done, you can go to the next slide to check if your students can remember the keywords. You ask them to fill in the blanks. When they say work or energy here, you then write work or energy, and then you ask them about the next blank, and they say it is one newton, and then the final one, which is one meter, and then you compare it with the original definition, which goes like this. Isn't that a much better way of reinforcing definitions in your students' minds? The third application is you can update the scores when you create a quiz session for your students. Let us say you have four teams and you have four questions. To team three, you ask question number three. You click on this and that takes you to quiz question number three. You ask your question, check if it is right or wrong. If the answer is right, you give plus 10. And if the answer is wrong, you give minus five. And you update the score by going to this button here. You click on scores and that takes you to the scoreboard. And you update the score by writing the score here. Then. You go to the dashboard by clicking on this button and then you ask team four its question. You click on this. That takes you to question number four. Find out if the answer is right or wrong. Let us say the answer is wrong. You go to scores and then say team four has scored minus five. So whether it is revising labels for pictures or keywords in a definition or even for updating scores, you can use this technique of typing directly during the slideshow. Now that you're convinced that this is a useful technique, let me show you how this technique works. Here I am on a new presentation. Let me show you how you can type these labels live during the presentation slideshow. Let us say this is the slide you would teach. Let us create a duplicate slide that you would use for revision. So I'm going to right click and say duplicate slide. I'm going to create a new text box that has the same dimension as this one, which you can use to type live. For this, the first thing we need to do is to add a new tab here called as Developer tab. By default, you won't find Developer tab in PowerPoint ribbon. So you right click on any of the tabs and go to this option called Customize the ribbon. That takes you to this dialog box. And here on the right, you would have multiple options to customize your ribbon. Let me go to the option called Developer. You can see it is unchecked by default. Let me click on this so that you can check it and then we say, OK, now we have a new tab called Developer tab. The next thing we are going to do is to click on Developer tab. And in the controls group, we are going to use the second option called as text box. Let me click on the text box option. And then I can use my cursor to create a text box that has the same size as the existing one. So it covers the existing one completely. Now I can go to the slideshow mode and I can type live inside the text box. I can say North America and the job is done. But then there are a few things we need to note. Now let us say I have more text to type. Now observe what happens. The previous text gets hidden. We need to fix that. The second thing is I don't really like the size of the font. I want to increase the font size and even want to change the font type itself so that it matches the style that I used earlier. So how can we fix those issues? Let me show you how it is done. Let me hit Escape. Now let me select this box and go to this option called Properties in the same controls group in the Developer tab. Let me click on Properties and that opens up this pane here. 
First, let us fix the font type and size. So let me go to this option called font. You can see the existing font that is used. And to the right, you can see the small button, which has three dots. You click on that and that opens up this dialog box. I can now change the font type by going down and the font type that I used is 2 sin MT. So I can go down and I can see 2 sin MT here. I'm going to click on that. And the type that I'm using is condensed extra bold. Now I am quite happy with that. Let us say I want to increase the size to somewhere around 28. I can do that. I can see a preview here and I can say, okay, now when I go back to the same slide, you can see I have my font changed. The next thing I want to do is to tell PowerPoint that this is going to be a multi-line text. For that, let me go to the properties box once again. And here I find the option called multi-line. By default, the option is false. Let me click on that. And here I have the drop down menu. When I click on the drop down menu, I have the option to turn it as true. Now I can see a live preview of what I've written. You can see that the font I've used is way too big. So I can once again go to the font option and I can click on this and I can reduce the size to say around 22. And when I say OK, you can see that the font size is exactly the way it is required. I can then close this properties box. I can go to slideshow mode and here I have North America written pretty much the way that I want. Now this is multi-line text. Let me go here and delete all the extra text that I had written earlier. Now let me clear all this text by using backspace and let us say I want to write some sample text here. I can write my text and I can always move my cursor up and I can have my new label like this. You can always play with the font size and the text box size to create your label boxes where you can type live. Now the beauty is once you create one of these boxes, you can always make copies of this and use it as a label for the remaining ones. For example, I can select this text box, press Ctrl D to create a duplicate and I can move it to its new position to cover the second text box and I can go to the slideshow mode and I can write this text the way I want. For example, I can always say this is South America and I can go to the top and I have my new label shown. So once you create one text box with the dimension and the attributes that you like, you can always create multiple copies of them to have interactive typeable labels. I did exactly the same thing to revise this definition. All I need to do is to go to the same option here called text box in controls. And then I draw a text box like this, adjust the size like the way I want, and then go to slideshow mode and write what I want by writing work or energy. And I can always adjust the font type and size by using the properties box by selecting this box here and by going to the properties window. Now let me show you the prototype of the quiz that I created. Let us say this is the dashboard. And I want to have three questions. So let me go to home. I'm going to use a simple text box to write three numbers here. Let us really increase the font size like so, so it is clearly visible. And this is question number one. Let us press Ctrl D so we can create a duplicate and let us have this as question number two. And then let us make another copy and call this question number three. Now we have three questions. Now we need to create those questions. So let us go to the thumbnail view, hit enter to create a new slide. And let us say this is question one. And let us create a duplicate by right clicking and using duplicate slide option. And let us call this question two, right click duplicate slide. And let us say this is question three. Now we have got our questions in place. Now let me create the scoreboard. Let me go here, hit enter and let us call this the scoreboard. I'm going to write names of three teams. So let us call the first team as team one and let us increase the font size substantially. And let us have team two here. And then we will have team three over here. Now we have the labels ready. Now we need to create a space for us to type the scores. For that, once again, let us go to developer and go to this option called text box. And then let us create a big text box like so. Now let us go to the properties and change the properties of this. I'm quite happy with Arial font. I just need to increase the font size to something really big, maybe around 36. And I'm quite okay with this. And let us say, okay. Now let us go back to the same slide. I know it is a pain. Sometimes you go out of PowerPoint when you close one of the screens. You can always click on PowerPoint icon again to come back to the screen that you're working on. Now this is perfect. 
when I go to slideshow mode, if I want to enter the score here, I can say 45. Yeah, this is the size that I want. Let me press backspace. Let me clear that out and let me make copies of this while holding the control button down. I can click and drag this text box and you can see I have team two scores shown and then we have team three scores shown here. Perfect. Now we have our scoreboard in place. Let me close this. We don't really require the developer tab anymore. Now let me connect these various pages so we can create a beautiful interactive quiz session. Let me go to the dashboard here. Let me connect each of these numbers to their relevant questions. For that, let me click on the first number, then go to insert. And here in the links, you have the option called action. You then go to this option called hyperlink to. You click on that option, go to this drop down menu and go to this option called slide. And here you can see the link to question one. So click on question one and you can see a preview of the screen here. You say, OK, now number one is connected to question one. And if you want to play sound of a click, you can do so by clicking on play sound. And I'm going to choose the option called click and I'm going to say OK. Now let me repeat the same thing for number two as well. I'm going to select this, go to action and then say hyperlink to then drop down menu, slide, and let us go to question two. And here I see preview, say OK, play sound and say click and say OK. Let us repeat one last time. Go to action, go to hyperlink to slide, and we are going to question three. OK, play sound, and we say click and say OK. Now each of these numbers are connected to their respective questions. Now when we go to question one, we need to have a connection to scoreboard. So once again, let us go to home, use the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle shape like so and say this is scores. And we are going to connect this to the scoreboard. So click on this box, go to insert, go to links and say action and hyperlink to and we are going to click on slide and we can see scoreboard here, which is the slide that we want to connect this to. And this is the preview and say OK. And once again, let us play sound and say click and say OK. Now when I click, it will take me to the scoreboard. Now this is an asset that can be copied. So I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy this. Go to question two, press Ctrl V to paste it. Question three, Ctrl V to paste it. Now we have the links for each of the question to the scoreboard. Now when I go to the scoreboard, I want to create a connection to the dashboard. So let me use the rectangular box here and say this is dashboard. So once again, we are going to link this by selecting this by going to insert action and let us hyperlink this to slide and say the first slide, which is dashboard and say, OK, now this is connected. Let us add the sound as we did earlier and say, OK, now we have completed the creation of the scoreboard. When I go to the first slide and go to slideshow, you can see we have three questions. If I want to go to question two, I can click on this and that takes me to question two. You ask your question, get the answer and to update the scores, you click on scores and that takes you to the scoreboard. Let us say team two has given you the right answer. You add 10 marks and then go to dashboard and then ask team three its question and then ask your question, get your answers, go to scores, update the team score by saying this is minus five and then go to dashboard and you repeat the exercise. So that is how you create an interactive quiz game where you can update your scores live in front of them using the technique that I showed you in this video. Now, there is a very important note before we close this presentation, and that is how to save your PowerPoint file the right way once you insert a typeable text box. Please realize that anytime you add any of the ActiveX controls from Developer tab, you've added a macro to your PowerPoint presentation and therefore you need to save your PowerPoint file as a macro enabled PowerPoint presentation. To do that, you need to go to file, go to save as option, give this a name and then click on the drop down menu. And here you would see the option called PowerPoint macro enabled presentation called star.pptm. This is the file type you need to save the presentation in. Please also remember that you can save this presentation as PowerPoint macro enabled show, which opens directly in PowerPoint slideshow mode. If you want to share your presentation with your students so they can use your interactive slides to revise your lessons. So please remember to save your presentation as a macro enabled presentation or a macro enabled show 
so that you don't lose your work. Once you make your choice, you hit save and the job is done. If you like this simple technique, you will really love all the creative techniques available in our Ram Gopal's PowerPoint Mastery Program. It is one thing to know PowerPoint and it is a totally different thing to know PowerPoint well enough to be able to use it creatively. Ram Gopal's PowerPoint Mastery Program is arguably the most comprehensive and creative PowerPoint training program available online. This program is a collection of 34 different programs and you can see all the details here. I will leave a link to this useful program in the description box below the video. You can click on the link, come to this page, check out the various programs that you can get access to by buying lifetime subscription of Ram Gopal's PowerPoint Mastery Program and you will create your PowerPoints in a very different way from here on. If you are a teacher, trainer or any other type of educator, you will really love our PowerPoint templates pack for teachers. I will leave a link to this product also in the description box below the video. You can check out details about this pack as well. Realize that as an educator, PowerPoint is a far more useful tool than what you had imagined. And to get the full use of it, get our templates back for teachers or Ram Gopal's PowerPoint Mastery Program and use PowerPoint the way it needs to be used. Finally, as always, if you want to join our 25 Creative Ideas free mini training on PowerPoint, you can click on the link here. If you like this video, please give this video a like and hit the subscribe button to join our 150,000 other subscribers who are taking their PowerPoint skills to the next level by watching our PowerPoint videos on YouTube. To watch our latest video, you can click on the link here. So go ahead, click on the link in the description box below the video and check out our Ram Gopal's PowerPoint Mastery Program and start using PowerPoint creatively. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.